Steve Jewin, MMA Mania. All right, here we go. I have Arlene on the line. All right, Arlene Blanco, a.k.a. Anger Fist. How are you doing today? I'm good, thank you. How are you? Excellent. I'm really looking forward to this fight you've got coming up at Bellator 189, and it's your rematch with Julia Budd. You gave her her closest fight to date, so how are you feeling going into this second one? Yeah, I'm excited too for it. Um, Obviously, for two reasons, that it's a rematch and I get to avenge that, and also the fact that it's for the Bellator World title, so um, yeah, I'm definitely excited. What are you going to do differently in this fight compared to the last one? Um, yeah, I'll probably just be a little bit more aggressive, I guess. Um, like, I mean, like you said, I wasn't far off the mark first time. So, um, I've just, since that fight and have been working, um, like pretty hard on all my weaknesses, which is obviously the grappling in my ground game and that. So, um, I'm pretty confident in, in that area now. And obviously I'm, I'm very confident with my striking and, um, yeah, I just, I guess I'll just take the game plan that my team and I have been working on and, um, come away with a win. You've been 8 out of your last 10 with the only two losses being to Kunin and Bud. So how much confidence does that give you going in, aside from changing the game plan? Um, a lot of confidence. Um, like a lot of people, sort of like my fans and people that have just followed me, probably don't really know where my tra- how my training camps and everything have been going. But um, to be honest, the last 12 months since the fight with Julia has probably been my most serious 12 months with MMA, as in... I've been able to train properly with grapplers, um, wrestlers, BJJ people, and obviously also really like, um, my, so I'm trying to think of the word, um, just been on my strength with my hands. So, um, yeah, and I guess the three wins that I've got this year has shown from that. So the fact that I lost to Julia and lost to Marluz, um with the training that I was getting at the time and still able to reach that number three position in the world, um, with with that training, um, yeah, it's, I'm excited, I guess, for what happens here um, with me winning the world title and, and moving forward. With your combined boxing and MMA experience, where did the name Anger Fist come from? Did it come from the boxing world or from MMA? Um, it came from the MMA um, world, actually. It did sort of come originally. I had an entrance, a fight song that was a bit of a, a mashup of songs and... Um, one of the first lines of the song um, was, Hi, my name is, and then the other, Anger Fist. It's by the, the group Anger Fist, and then it was just a continuation of other songs uh, mashed up. But um, obviously then me going transitioning from boxing to MMA, um, my strengths have always been my hands and my power, so it just, I guess, stuck from there, and I was just given the name, like, continue on with giving the name, being given the name Anger Fist. Um, but, yeah, so... You've been, as I mentioned, on a tear lately with eight out of your last ten, and the two opponents that you lost to are world class, so you can't take any shame in that. But what else can you attribute your success to after an inauspicious start in MMA? Yeah, I was a late comer to the sport. I had my debut fight on my 30th birthday weekend um, with four months grappling and jiu-jitsu training. Um, and in that first year, like, totaled up eight fights. So, I mean, you can't learn much from camp to camp when you're fighting sort of, you know, a, a few weeks apart. And, um, yeah, so like I said previously too, like I, I was backing up fights and not really getting the proper training and, and correcting things that I was, wasn't was doing right. So, um, yeah, I guess from each fight I, I've learned. And, um, you know, like... My first fight, I lost my armbar, so I, I went back to training and, and really worked on my armbar arm defense, and I lost a fight by rear naked choke, so that was something that I drilled and drilled and drilled. So, you know, um, yeah, I, I took a lot from each of those losses, and, yeah, probably had to work twice as hard to try and fix my record, but it's one of the things that um, I'll always be grateful for, for with Bellator is the fact that I was signed... Um, like with a record of five and four, which wasn't crash hot, but you know they saw something big in me, and and here I am two years later fighting for the world title. So, and with a record that's a lot better than five and four. I would also go on to say that as your career has risen, so has women's MMA in Australia, because we've seen other fighters like Jesse Rose and Beck Rawlings go on to have success as well. So, how do you feel about that scene as yeah. a whole? We've also got Megan Anderson from Australia too, um, who took the um, Invicta world title as well, so she's looking at her UFC debut. But, 
Yeah, no, it definitely is. I, I guess um, the reason I actually started MMA so four years ago was the climb in, um, you know, females stepping into the cage, and that was, I guess, thanks to Ronda Rousey and her climb to fame. But, um, yeah, since then there's been heaps of girls, and, yeah, the, the standouts in Australia now, and the same with the guys. I mean, I've got teammates that are um, fighting in the UFC, and, um, yeah, Australia's making their mark on the map, and there's some really talented fighters coming out of there. So um, I, I'm definitely excited to be the only Australian at the moment signed with Bellator and, and the only female ever to be signed with Bellator. And then you know, to bring that world title home to Australia means a lot to me. Speaking of your team, talk about who's done the most to get you ready for this fight. Who's giving you the little tricks and tips that'll put you over the top? Um, well, I would say I've got um, so my coach is Sean Sullivan, but I've also got um, one of my teammates um, and corner people, Tyson Pedro, who, as I just said, um, he's one of the fighters that's fighting in the UFC at the moment. But um, I do take a lot of knowledge and, and skill set from Tyson because he has the same background. Like he was a boxer um, previously, and then he's gone, um, you know, over to MMA. But he's just very, very talented and, and educated in all aspects of MMA and um, you know we appreciate my strengths and that so we kind of are on the same on the same page but um, so but apart from that all my teammates back at Lions um, High Performance Centre um, there's a lot of guys that are sort of around my weight and, and a little bit heavier and that and they've pushed me heaps in the gym um, this fight camp and, and all of this year actually so you know I'm very thankful to have um, such good teammates that are you know, always willing to help out you know change their training sessions change their styles and to match you know what i'll be facing in an opponent so how surprised uh going back to the last julia bud fight how surprised were both you and your team when it came back as a majority decision when it seemed like you had clearly won one round and another round could have gone either way and it very much looked like it could have been two to one in your favor yeah i guess um like, I didn't, personally, in my own head, didn't think, like, it was a, a close fight, because I guess for me, like, getting taken down on the ground, it's a little bit disheartening, and then, you know, having to try and fight and get back up again, but after re-watching it, um, yeah, I realised how how close it actually was, and it probably would have changed a few, a, a, a few things I would have done in that last round, but, um, yeah, I guess it's, it's exciting. I had a lot of um, things going on during that fight camp that, that I had to overcome, so for me, I was actually just pleased with how the fight went and, you know, having gone three rounds and was competitive with Julia, whereas, yeah, this time around, it, it won't be going the rounds and, and it won't be that I won't just be competitive. I'll be making a statement and um, winning that title. Well, you said it won't be going the rounds, but there are two extra rounds. So if it did go the rounds this time, what's your conditioning going to be like in the fourth and fifth? I work out um, extremely hard in all of my fight camps and even outside of fight camps. Um, so yeah, conditioning isn't isn't a question. It's something that um, yeah, like if it, if it goes around, it can be fine. How are you liking your time in the United States? You know, taking these Bellator fights and this one in particular being the main event. Um, yeah, well, I'm definitely a lot more settled this time. I um, last fight. In New York, when I fought in Verona, we actually had delayed flights and um, and didn't get back, didn't get into where we were staying until 3:30 in the morning on the Tuesday, and I fought on the Friday. So I was extremely um, like jet lagged and was struggling a little bit with um, you know, what time of the day it was. And come fight time, I was sort of yawning and ready for bed. But we arrived here on Sunday at 1:30, so I you know um, got a good night's sleep on Sunday night, and we've trained and um, yeah. I've, I'm accustomed to what time it is here rather than living on Australian time. So, um, yeah, no, it's good. I'm I'm very lucky to have, you know, I've been over to the States now quite a few times and um, obviously been having 40 at Windstar Casino two years ago. I'm familiar with what's here and, and um, you know, what's around and stuff. So, um, you know, we've got a car this time that's given us a little bit more freedom. So I've been shopping and went shopping again. But, um, you know, it's been good. All right. Well, it's funny you mentioned that last fight in Thackville because the preview image I chose for the draft of this interview was you throwing a kick at Gabby Holloway's head. So I think we could call you anger kick as well. <laughs> yeah, no, um, it, it's good. I guess a lot of people think that because I'm a, you know, from the boxing background and, yeah, my hands are something that I should be very scared of. But, you know, there are a lot, a lot more tools to my um, artillery than just my hands. So how much do you think Julia Budd has improved 
since the time you took her to that very close fight and her capturing the world title? Um, well, I'm not really here to sort of focus on how much she's improved. Obviously, being the world champion, she's going to be wanting to, you know, fight pretty hard to keep that title. I mean, putting myself in her shoes, if, you know, when I've got that title, I won't be losing it. So that would be the mindset that she'd have. And, you know, just as when she fought Marlou, she'd be hungry to win that title. So, yeah, I guess it changes, you know, how you take a fight. It's not just a fight. She's defending something that she's worked extremely hard for her whole career. But um, she's also facing somebody that's um, even hungrier to win that title than she was when she fought Marlou. Like, you know, I've had... Um, everything in my career and, and my life sort of, and I was led up to this moment. And for me, it is an extremely important thing for me to be taking this belt home to Australia. And, um, yeah, I, I don't see any other outcome than me doing that. How great is it that this month in December, we're going to have two featherweight world title fights, yours with Julia Budd and Holly Holm facing Chris Cyborg. It's, um, yeah, it's amazing. It's actually, I didn't sort of get my head around the fact that, um, until I read it in an interview that, you know, Julia and I are, you know, the two top ranked fighters in the world under Chris Cyborg. Like, I remember four years ago watching Chris Cyborg's return to the cage and it was the Invicta cage and I was like, wow, look at this chick. Like, she was just so powerful and, you know, um, within that first year I managed to get my name into the top ten in the world, um, you know, as a featherweight. But, you know, I'm only two spots away like on Friday night my name will be directly under her name on the featherweight rankings and um, yeah eventually it would be awesome one day to be able to face her in the cage obviously with me being signed to Bellator and her being signed to um, the UFC it's it's not going to be something that can happen unless she's willing to come over to Bellator but you know she's put talks out there about wanting to step into the boxing ring so maybe that's something that we could organise and and have the two top featherweights in the world have a boxing fight or something. So, yeah, it's, um, no, it's exciting. I'm, I'm very happy with where I've come from and where I'm at at the moment and where I'm going. I would love to see that. In fact, since we've already seen MMA fighters taking boxing fights this year, you know, and you've got that boxing background, why not just do a marquee card in Las Vegas? You know, get Mayweather Promotions on that and get you on the card. Well, yeah, I've, I've put it out there now, and it was something that, um, you know, like I said, I'm, um, I said in other interviews too, a lot of questions have been asked whether or not I would go over to the UFC after winning this title, but it was never, for me, it was never using Bellator as a stepping stone to get to the UFC, like I'm winning this world title, and I'm happy to be the Bellator world title holder. But, um, yeah, if she wants to have a fight with me, then, you know, she's more than happy to come over here to Bellator, or, yeah, we can speak to, like you said, the Mayweather promotions and, and get the talk happening, you know, all it, all it takes is for a spark to be lit in the media and people start talking and then people can start organising, throwing money at the idea. I mean, look at Mayweather and McGregor's fight. That was just a joke originally and then, you know, it happened. So, um, you know, it could be a very real thing that I fight so, Cyborg in the boxing ring. Well, we may have lit a spark here, but I know you'll light one on Friday night against Julia Budd, so... Yeah, yeah, for now, I'm not even thinking of Cyborg. That's uh, um, yeah, that's not even a thought for me. I'm more eyes on um, Julia Budd and winning the world title. Um, I had the photo shoot earlier this morning, um, and I got to hold the belt, and, yeah, that, that there was... That, um, signed the final deal with, yeah, the fact that I'll be bringing that belt home, so... Um, yeah. Be on Friday night. Yeah, you don't want to be holding it on Friday. You want it to be put around your waist. Yeah, yeah. Well, the feeling in the suit. I got a photo with it around my waist, and it was um, it it almost brought tears to my eyes because yeah, it's I can picture it already in that cage. So, um, I've only ever fought, felt like that one other time in my fight career, and it's when I won my two world titles in boxing. So, um, I, I know the feeling. Right. Well, here's hoping you'll be feeling that way again on Friday. But before we get to that, I'd like to give you this time to thank sponsors, teammates, throw out social media plugs, anything you'd like. Okay. So, um, obviously, first I would like to thank my coaches and teammates at my entire performance center um, for all the work they've put in me. Um, my partner and my children for putting up with me um, and not divorcing me through all these fight camps. Um, Muscle Brothers, these guys have had my back since I've come on board and helped, have helped me so much. Um, I've got Morgan's 
sports equipment, um, Triple X Industries, Green Homes, Millionaire Gymwear, Physio Inc. Team Body Fit, June Gear, Flawless Laser Solutions and Valley Fitness. Um, these guys have all been on board, either been on board since the beginning or have come on board more recently. But um, for however long, you know, they've been on board, I'm more than grateful for all the help that I've been um, have received and got me throughout my fight camps. So big shout out to all those sponsors. And- oh, actually, I do have another shout out. Sorry. Oh, go I ahead. Another shout out. Um, yeah, of course. My, um, my manager, Chris Fender um, from MMA U Management. Um, he's been my manager now and was the manager that got me signed to Bellator. Um, he's done heaps for me over the four years and with very little in return. So um, I appreciate all his help and I'm so glad that I got a good egg when I got a manager like him. Excellent. Well, thanks to him and thanks to you for the time today. And we look forward to a fantastic fight Friday night in Thackerville.